<تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear students I hope you're all well and I hope you're safe and enjoying this distance learning Today inshallah we are going to start unit 4 Unit 4 is uh, made up of two lectures but these two lectures are huge. That's why we decided to divide each lecture into two. So this is lecture 4.1 and the title is Cell Cycle and Mitosis. So for this lecture, we are going to have 4.1a, which will be today's lecture. And next time, inshallah, it, we will continue 4.1 and that will be named 4.1b. The second lecture, which is 4.2, uh, will be about meiosis and sexual uh, cycle. That lecture is, again, very long, so we decided to divide it into two. That will be 4.2a, and the next one will be 4.2b. All right, so let's start with uh, this lecture. Inshallah, you'll have an enjoyable time and thanks for tuning in. So today's lecture will be about the cell cycle and mitosis. We're going to learn all about the cell cycle in details and uh, mitosis. And we will continue uh, speaking about uh, mitosis in the next lecture, Inshallah, which is 4.1b. So. What are today's lecture outcome? Let's look here. Of course, since this is divided into two lectures, we are not going to do uh, the whole of the lecture outcomes today. For today's lecture, we are going to define cell cycle and identify cell division, which is part of the cell cycle. Then we are going to list the roles of cell division. Why do we have cell division? What are the benefits or what are the roles of cell division? Then thirdly, we are going to describe the structure and role of chromosomes. Structure and roles of chromosomes. We've uh, spoken about chromosomes previously, but today we are going to learn more about chromosomes. And then we are going to distinguish the two cell divisions, which are mitosis and meiosis. I'm sure you've covered all the details in high school, but you covered it in Arabic. And it will be just a matter of translation so that you translate your knowledge that you already have in your mind. And I'm sure you recall most of it into the terminologies in English. Um, then we are going to explain the different stages of the cell cycle and what happens in each stage. And finally, for today's lecture, we are going to identify the last stage of interface. All right. Okay, and then in the next lecture, we are going to discuss mitosis in details okay so for today it will be just introductory lecture about the new terms about the cell cycle what happens in each phase how does the cell prepare to divide and all of that and in the next lecture we are actually going to discuss the real division what happens in division what are the changes uh, what are the details in each of the sub -phase? and all these details. All right, so let's start with the lecture. These images show reproduction of different living things, whether it was human, um, plants, bacteria, whatever. But the thing is the ability to reproduce is one characteristics that best distinguishes living things from non-living things. And if you recall, when we took the seven common features of life in unit one, 
one of the seven common features was the ability to reproduce or reproduction. Okay, so today we are going to talk about reproduction in details, what's actually happening during reproduction in terms of the nucleus, uh, the chromosomes, and all the other tiny details. All right, now let's start with the famous statement that says omnis cellula e cellula, omnis cellula e cellula. This very famous uh, statement uh, was by the German scientist Rudolf Virchow. And this basically means, let's translate this, this statement. Of course, it's very obvious that it's not in English. It means every, excuse my handwriting, cell from a cell, every cell from a cell. So basically, this statement means that every cell comes or originates from another cell. So if you have a cell, you must know 100% that it comes from another cell, and that cell comes from another cell, and that cell comes from another cell, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so basically, um, the bottom line is every life from a life. Every life comes from another life. All right, so here it says continuity of life from one cell to another is based on a process called cell division. Cell division. What is the cell division? Cell division is the production of new cells from pre-existing cells. Okay, so new cells come from cells that already exist. So we call them pre-existing cells. And this process of cell division is part of a larger uh, process, which we call the cell cycle. Okay, a cell cycle. Let me highlight the cell cycle over here. So cell division is part of the cell cycle. It's just a small part of the bigger process, which we call the cell cycle. Now, this cell cycle is basically a series of steps or stages in a cell's life. Okay, this is a series of steps. You'll see later the details of this steps and the cell division is part of the um, cell cycle. It's just an only a tiny part of the uh, cell cycle. All right, now uh, let's look at this uh, beautiful uh, figure over here. As you can see, we start from the lower left over here. This is one cell, okay? Now these are fluorescent images, okay? Fluorescent images of an animal cell. We start from here, this is the beginning, and then it goes to the next step, you can see, of course, these are chromosomes that fluoresce in different colors. It goes on and on in a series of steps of the cell cycle until it reaches the end here where it has given rise to two cells, okay? So you can see the changes that are taking place in the chromosomes, and we are going to discuss all these changes in detail until it gives rise to two daughter cells. All right, so that's the meaning of omnicellula, e cellula, and that's considered the third statement of what we call the cell theory. Okay, so every life comes from another life. Okay, what is this cell cycle? What is the cell cycle? The cell cycle is the life of a cell from its origin, from its origin. The origin means the 
from the time of its creation. Okay, from the time of its creation or division from a parent cell. Okay, so this parent cell gave rise to another cell and the cell cycle is the life of the cell from its origin until its own division into two daughter cells. Okay, so from the origin until, this is the origin of the cell, okay, with the nucleus, until it gives rise or it divides into two cells. This series of events, sorry, it should be like this, this series of events that leads to the division of a cell from the time of its creation or from its origin to its own division into two daughter cells, we call it the cell cycle. Okay, now let's have a look at this cycle very quickly because I'm going to discuss it in detail later on. So this is our cell. Okay, this cell came from a parent cell. It came from a parent cell. Okay, so now it by itself, we call it parent cell because it will undergo this cycle from here and then it will go on there and it will continue okay it will pass through here and then it will produce another or two daughter cells okay two daughter cell daughter cells a number here, two daughter cells. So this series of events, we call it the cell cycle. I'm going to discuss all these later on in details. Before talking about how do cells divide, we need to understand why do cells divide in the first place? Why do cells divide? So we ask ourselves the question, why do cells divide? All right, cells divide mainly for four reasons. The first one, cells divide to produce entire organisms. And this holds true for unicellular organisms, okay? Unicellular organisms, let's remind ourselves, are organisms that are made up of just one single cell. All right, let's give an example. For example, we've got this amoeba. Amoeba is a protista, right? Okay, now this amoeba, which is a single celled eukaryote, is dividing to give rise into two cells. This is one and this is two. Each one now, or each new cell, is an individual organism. So we started with one amoeba and we ended with two amoebas, right? So this production of entire organism is only in case of unicellular organisms. Can you give other examples other than amoeba where you've got unicellular organisms which divide to give another whole organism. We actually took this in the lecture and in the lab. If you remember, uh, we talked about yeasts. How do yeasts divide? You have a yeast cell and then it's going to give a bud and then you're going to end up with two yeast cells. Of course, yeast has a nucleus. Okay. Because it's a eukaryotic organism. <clears throat> All right, another example is bacteria. Bacteria divides by binary fission to produce what? Two cells. All right, so production of an entire organism. That's number one. You've got entire organisms. Okay, the second point is production of progeny from some multicellular organisms. Now, progeny, معناته ذرية. Okay, so production of progeny from some multicellular organisms. 
Now we are talking, we are done with unicellular organism, which is number one. This is number two. It concerns multicellular organism. For example, you've got here a starfish. Okay, fission means breaking down. So you've got part of it that was broken down. Then from this part, you can produce a full organism. Okay, from this cut part, you can produce a full organism. Another example is if you have a part of the plant that is cut, now this plant can then produce a whole new plant with leaves and all the other organs. Okay, so this second point concerns multicellular organisms. A third point is growth and development of sexually reproducing organisms. Okay, let's look at this figure here. So we have a sperm cell and we have an egg cell. These two, they fuse together and they produce what we call a zygote. Zygote, which is just a single cell. And then division from this zygote will produce a ball of cells. This is a ball of cells. And this ball of cells will develop to produce a full organism. Okay. This ball of cells will produce a full organism. And this is by uh, cell division. Okay. So from a zygote. We go from one cell to trillions of cells in order to produce a fully developed uh, organism. That's the third point of why do cells divide. And finally, cells also divide in order to renew and repair damaged and injured tissues. For example, when your skin breaks just you know you injured yourself okay you injured your hand while cutting a, fru a fruit what's going to happen of course you're going to bleed and then the cell division uh, of the cells around that injury are going to replace the cells that were lost and then you are going to have a healed tissue okay now, for another example is when you have skin cells. Our skin cells, they get shed away, okay, every few weeks. And another example, red blood cells. Red blood cells, uh, the lifespan of red blood cells is around 120 days. So again, they get renewed. But keep in mind that we have some cells that never undergo cell division once they are mature. For example, nerve cells and mu muscle cells. These cells can never regrow or repair. Okay, so once they are mature, we have to take care of them so that uh, we don't lose them. All right, these are the four reasons of why do cells divide. This is a DNA molecule. As you can see, the DNA molecule uh, is made up of two strands. So it's a double helix. Let's refresh our memory. What is a gene? What's the definition of a gene? A gene. So this is a gene. This is another gene. This is a third gene. So if you recall, a gene is a segment of a DNA that codes for an RNA or a protein, right? So this can code for a protein, for example. It can code for a protein. This, on the other hand, can code for an RNA molecule. So basically, a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for an RNA or a protein. What is a genome? So we have a gene and we have a genome. A genome is a complete genetic material of an organism. So when we talk about genes, gene is one. Genome is the full set of genes. Okay, it's the full set of genes. So all genes of an organism, 
we call it genome. It's the whole of its hereditary information that is encoded in its DNA. Okay, now the genome exists as chromosomes. Genes, they exist as chromosomes. We are going to speak about chromosomes in the next few slides in detail. And uh, here it gives an example. A human genome is three meters long. This is from one cell. So the full genes from one cell. Remember, the DNA is twisted and coiled. Okay. Now, if you open that twist, if you spread it out, some sources say that it can reach up to two or three meters long. Okay. So you have to differentiate between a gene and a genome. A gene is one. A genome is the full set of genes in an organism. Now let's look at chromosomes. Let's look at the word chromosome. Okay, the first thing you do when you just encounter a strange name in science, okay, or a strange term, you divide the word, okay? So here, we can divide it into chromo, put, let me put a line here, and zomes, chromosomes. All right, let's look at the first word, chromo. Chromo means color. Zomes means bodies, and you've seen this word before, right? You've seen it a couple of times. Ribosomes, lysosomes, okay? So chromosomes means colored bodies. Colored bodies, okay. Why? Why did scientists name them as colored bodies, as chromosomes? And these are, this is a Greek word, okay? Um, scientists gave this name to chromosomes because they are cell structures that are strongly stained by some colorful uh, dyes or pigments in the lab, okay? And you can see right here in this figure, and if you recall the first figure that I've shown you before, where you see some beautiful fluorescent colors of chromosomes, they stain with beautiful colors in the lab. That's why scientists call them chromosomes. Now, our DNA molecules are packaged into chromosomes. Okay, so the DNA molecules, they exist as chromosomes in the nucleus of each cell. The DNA is packaged into thread-like structures Okay, which appear very obviously during a specific duration of the cell cycle. Okay, now let's look at, I'll try to draw a chromosome uh, here. Chromosomes are made up of DNA and they're made up of circular proteins that are called histones. So these are the proteins, which I'm drawing them in red color. And now I'm going to draw the DNA with a different color. So the DNA is a thread. It comes here. It coils around the histone proteins. It's coiling here and coiling, coiling with another histone protein, etc., etc. Okay, so this blue thing is the DNA. And this... These red balls, these are proteins. Okay, so DNA plus proteins will give you what? It will give you chromosomes, chromosomes. Okay, so each chromosome is made up of DNA that is tightly coiled many, many times around these tiny proteins, which we call histone proteins. These proteins are very, very important in order to keep the DNA coiled and twisted. Okay, so this is done. Let's look at the next term. These chromosomes are not visible in the cell nucleus not even under the microscope. 
you've all seen cells under the microscope, right? You've seen plant cells, Rio discolor. You've seen your own cells, which were epithelial cells. Tell me, were you able to see the chromosomes under the microscope? No, you just saw a nucleus, which was very obvious as a dark uh, sphere. Okay, but you can only see chromosomes under the microscope during a specific duration of the cell cycle. And this is when they are preparing to divide. When the, uh, when the chromosomes are preparing to divide, they become very tightly packed during the cell division and only then they can be visible under the microscope when the cell is, is uh, preparing to divide, okay? Under normal situation, when the cell is not dividing, you can never see the chromosomes under the microscope because they are not uh, tightly uh, coiled and twisted, okay? They are very, very thin threads, which are not obvious. All right, now, each eukaryotic species has a characteristic number of uh, chromosomes in the nucleus, okay? So each species, they have a certain number that is special for that species. For example, human cells, how many chromosomes do we have in our cells? I'm sure you all know the answer. The answer is 46 chromosomes. We mentioned in the previous slide that um, different species have different numbers of chromosomes. And we gave an example of a human cell, okay, and specifically a diploid cell, okay. So 2n means diploid, diploid diploid okay what does that mean diploid means that they are present as two sets we inherit one set from our mother and one set from our father okay so um, 2n is equal to 46 and this is the number of chromosomes that are found in our normal body cells You'll understand this concept later when we talk about sexual cells, okay? For now, you just need to know that uh, 2n is deployed. 2n means we have two sets of chromosomes, one we inherit from our mother and one we inherit from our father. Now, let's have a look at some examples of species and their, uh, the number of chromosomes that are present in their diploid cells, okay? For example, common fruit fly, okay, has eight chromosomes. Maize, Manatadura, has 20 chromosomes. Domestic cat, يعني القط المنزلي, 38 chromosomes. Chicken, 78 chromosomes. That's a bit surprising, more than a human cell, where we have 46 chromosomes. Cows have 60 chromosomes. Horses have 64 chromosomes. Okay, so this is just to give you an example of how different species have different number of chromosomes. The one that you should know, of course, and you all already know that human cells that are diploid have 46 chromosomes. Let's look at the structure of eukaryotic chromosomes. All right, so um, let me choose a pen. All right, now let's look at it from the smaller level. Okay, let's start from here. Now, this is our double helix of DNA. Okay, this is the sugar phosphate backbone, okay? And these are the nitrogenous bases. The nitrogenous bases are bonded together by what? 
Yes, that's correct, by hydrogen bonds. So this is our double helix DNA. If we zoom into it further, we will see these proteins. As I mentioned, these proteins are called histone proteins or histones. So the DNA actually wraps around the histone proteins. See this tiny threads? It wraps around the histone proteins. Now tell me, why is this important? Why it wasn't just the DNA, the thread of the DNA without the histone uh, proteins? Do you think that will be possible? The answer is no, it's not possible because without the presence of histone proteins, DNA molecule would be too long to fit inside the nucleus. Okay, so these histone proteins are really important to keep or to give the DNA Okay, a structure so that it can coil around it. It can just keep coiling around it so that it can actually fit inside the cell. And as I mentioned previously, if all the DNA molecule in a single, in just one human cell, were completely unstretched, sorry, completely stretched from one end to another, then it would be around two to three meters long. So that's even taller than yourself. It's actually taller than me. I'm around 160 uh, centimeters, okay? So histone proteins are very, very important in order to keep the DNA packaged inside the cell nicely and neatly. Now, let's have a look here. Let's see when the coiling and twisting around the histone proteins are even more, okay? Uh, then this is going to lead to our duplicated chromosome. Duplicated chromosome. Now, what's the meaning of duplicated? It means that it was one chromosome and now you have another chromosome right here. So now it's double. Duplicated means two. Now, notice how I have drawn the DNA right here we represent it in an X shape, okay? And this is equal to chromosome, chromosome, okay? Now, each one of those will be called a chromatid. So this is one chromatid and this is another chromatid. So one chromatid and another chromatid will give you one chromosome. So one chromosome is equal to two chromatid, chromatid with a D. And notice this narrow area over here where the two chromatids come together. This area here we call it centromere, centromere. Okay, so you have a chromosome and you have a chromatid. And if you recall, we also have a chromatin, chromatin. Chromatin is basically histone plus DNA. Okay, but without being super cold, without being super cold. So it's actually this part here. This part, we call it chromatin. Once it becomes super, super coiled, when the cell is planning to divide, it's preparing to divide, then only we call it a chromosome. Chromosome is much thicker and much shorter than a chromatin. Chromatin is a microscope. Um, chromosome, you can actually observe it under the microscope because now they are thick, they are much thicker and much shorter, okay? Much, much more compact, okay? So make sure you understand the difference between chromatin, chromatid, and chromosome, okay? I hope that's clear. 
Now, what is the function of the histone proteins? I have already mentioned one of the function, and that is to maintain the structure of chromosome so that we can fit the DNA inside the very tiny microscopic uh, nucleus. It has to wrap around, the DNA has to wrap around the histone proteins. That's number one. Number two, uh, scientists found that they also play a role in controlling gene activity. Okay, so they also control gene activity. Okay, how is the genome passed from one generation to the next generation without dilution? Without dilution. Okay, without dilution, معناته بدون تخفيف, بدون تقليل. Okay, so the same number is passed from one generation to another generation. Your grandparents had how many chromosomes? 46 chromosomes. Your parents had how many chromosomes? 46 chromosomes. And you have 46 chromosomes. And later on, inshallah, you're going to pass to, to pass the chromosomes to your kids, and they are going to have... 46 chromosomes as well. So the question says, how is the genome passed from one generation to the next without any dilution? The answer is very simple, and it's actually logic and common sense. It's because we have what we call DNA duplication. DNA duplication. DNA duplication means the copying of the cell's DNA. Okay, the copying. It's basically making a copy. So one becomes two. It becomes double. And that's where the word duplication comes from. It's copying of the cell's DNA. Okay, now you might think that this is a very simple task. It's just it's as if you have a piece of paper and you go to the copier machine and you make a copy, then you have two identical copies of the same uh, material. Okay, but th for in case of DNA, it's not a simple task. Imagine that you have 100 or even more, 100 billion pairs of DNA in your genome. All of them have to be, they must be accurately copied uh, when any one of your trillions of cells divides, okay? So that's not a simple task, uh, DNA duplication. It's a very complicated uh, task that happens with great um, accuracy. So you've got here on this figure a parental DNA. This parental DNA, they are going um, to be separated and then each one is going to act as a template for a new copy of the DNA. So this dark, let me select another color. So this dark blue, this is the parental or the old strand. This is the old strand. And this light blue, this is the new strand. So each new copy of the DNA will have one old strand and one new strand and the same thing here okay now let's look at the figure uh, below we have got here how many chromosomes one chromosome just to make it simpler and easy to understand now this chromosome is going to duplicate okay when it duplicates you will have Still, we call this one chromosome, but it has two sister chromatids. Two sister chromatids. This one here is an exact copy of this one here. It's an, it's an identical copy. Now, notice this very thin area over here, or let's look at this figure here. This is called the centromere. It's where the two sister chromatids, they join together, okay? That narrow area, we call it uh, uh, centromere. Now, these two sister chromatids are going to separate into two daughter cells, okay? So, we started with one cell, 
that has one chromosome and we ended with two cells each one having one chromosome how did that happen because we had chromosome duplication which is the chromosome becoming double okay it's making another copy of itself all right so the identical dna copies are split into two daughter cell this is one daughter cell and this is the other daughter cell now this is essential this is very very important for cell division okay so dna duplication is essential for cell division so that the genome can be passed from one generation to the next generation without dilution back to the cell cycle again the cell cycle is a series of events that take place in a cell causing it to divide into two daughter cell so from the time of its origin until the time that it divides into two daughter daughter cells okay now these two uh, the, the cell cycle is divided into two main phases the first one is called interphase and the second one is called mitotic phase or the m phase okay m means mitotic so now we are going uh, to um, talk a little bit about what happens in the interface and in the next lecture we are going to talk about the details of what happens in the mitotic phase the cell cycle is divided into two main phases we start with the interface and then we have the m phase okay now notice this is our starting point and this whole thing here from here until there this is the interface okay now you can notice the interface is much much longer than the mitotic phase why is that why do you think it, the interface is much longer than the m phase well the answer to that to that is the interface prepares the cell for division so this is preparatory phase or preparation phase preparatory phase okay and the m phase is actually where the division process occurs okay so this is where the division takes place we call it cell division the division takes place now usually in anything in life to prepare for something takes much much longer than to execute whatever project you are doing okay let's take an example uh, for example imagine that you have an exam okay you have the final exam of general biology one okay now how many hours do you think you need to study for four units of the exam okay you will need let's say every day you study for like one to two hours and then before the exam you study for like two three days eight hours per day so it will take you um, let's say 20 to 30 hours to study for the exam and then the exam how long is the exam it's gonna be two or three hours which is the execution part it's the M phase the cell division part okay so preparation takes much longer than division imagine that you're doing your skills project okay you're working as a team of four and each one has to do a certain uh, part of that project you're gonna spend hours and hours and hours to prepare for that project but then we give you only how long to showcase 
your project, we give you only eight minutes, okay? So take it as a rule, the preparation always, always takes much longer than the execution. And we will see later why does the cell spend most of its time in the interface, okay? It needs to grow. We'll talk about this later in details. It needs to duplicate its DNA, DNA or chromosome duplication, and it, need, it needs to grow again. And then only after it's ready, it is fully, 100% fully prepared to divide, only then it can undergo the M phase. Now let's look at the types of cell division. Cell division is divided into two types. We have the nuclear division, division of the nucleus, which always happens before the division of the cytoplasm. The division of the cytoplasm, we call it cytokinesis. Okay? The division of the cytoplasm is very simple. You just divide the cytoplasm into two in order to get two daughter cells. The nuclear division on the other side, um, we have two kinds. We have mitosis and we have meiosis. Okay. Um, okay, let's have a look at this animation. This is a cute animation. Mitosis, you start with a cell with 46 chromosomes and you end with two cells each having 46 chromosomes. This is 46. And this is 46. While in meiosis, you have a cell with 46, and you end up with four cells, each one having half the number of chromosomes. Okay, you can see it's 23 over here. Now, in the next lecture, in this lecture and the next one, which is 4.1, we will discuss mitosis. And in 4.2, we are going to discuss meiosis. However, in the next few slides, we will give you a brief overview of meiosis and mitosis. And later on, we will move to the details, inshallah. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus. Okay, it's the division of the nucleus. It takes place only in somatic cells. What are somatic cells? Somatic cells are all cells of the body except for sexual cells, except for gametes. Okay, so they are all body cells with the exception of sexual cells, which we call gametes. The gametes are eggs in female, and sperms in male. Okay, so somatic cells can be nerve cells, for example, are somatic cells, skin cells, blood cells, heart cells. All of these are somatic cells. Okay, so mitosis takes place in somatic cells, and the result of mitosis are two genetically identical daughter cells. Two cells that are genetically identical. They have the exact copy of the genome. Okay, so it's identical. That's the meaning of identical. It means it has an exact copy of the parent cell. It has the exact number, it has the exact number of genes, number of chromosomes, uh, types of genes. It's basically a copy of the uh, parental uh, cell. Okay, let's look at this figure. Okay, so we have parental cell. This is one parental cell. How many chromosomes does it have? Just check here, one chromosome, just one chromosome. Of course, our cells, we have 46 chromosomes, but just to make it easier to understand, we have one chromosome in this diagram. Now, this, one, this cell will undergo chromosome duplication. Now you can see how many uh, that 
one chromosome is duplicated now. Okay, remember these, we call them sister chromatids. These are sister chromatids. Okay, sister chromatids with a D, chromatids. Chromatids. Okay, after that, you will have mitosis. طبعا, the chromosome duplication takes place in the interface. We agreed about that, and you will see it uh, in a bit, okay, in the next few slides. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus. You can see the nucleus has divided. Here you started with one nucleus, and now you have two nuclei, okay? The cytoplasm is not yet divided. We need the process of cytokinesis in order to divide the cytoplasm over here. And now you end up with two daughter cells. Two daughter cells. Okay, so this is mitosis. You start with one cell and you end up with two daughter cells with the exact number of chromosomes. We started with how many chromosomes? One. And the two daughter cells, this has one chromosome and this has one chromosome as well. Okay, so let me highlight this. Same number of chromosomes. So, mitosis takes place in somatic cells and it results in the same number of chromosomes as the parental cells. Now let's look at meiosis. Meiosis again is the division of the nucleus, but it only takes place in gonads. What are gonads? Gonads are sexual organs, sexual organs. Do you remember what an organ is? An organ is a group of tissues. And what is a tissue? A tissue is a group of cells. Now the gonads, if they were in females, then we call them ovaries. This is in female. If they were in male, then we call them testes. Okay? All right. Now meiosis produces four daughter cells. So the result of meiosis are four daughter cells. Remember in mitosis, how many daughter cells did we have? We had only two daughter cells, while in meiosis, we have four daughter cells. Now, each one of those cells is called a gamete. Gamete. So, let me again change the color. This is one gamete. This is a second gamete, this is a third gamete, and this is a fourth gamete. So we end up with four gametes, four gametes, or four daughter cells. Okay, gametes is the scientific word in this case, in meiosis. Now, each of these gametes, they have only half the number of chromosomes of the parental cell. Let's have a look at the beginning here. So this is our parental cell, parental. How many chromosomes does it have? Two, right? This is one and this is two. Then you have chromosome duplication. And you can see now we have two chromosomes. Each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids. And this narrow area, we call it a centromere. Then in meiosis, you have two cell divisions. You have meiosis one followed by meiosis two. And the end result is four daughter cells or four gametes. We started with two chromosomes and we end with one chromosome. This is one, this has one, and this has one, and this has one. Okay, so 
meiosis takes place where? In gonads. What are gonads? Gonads are the sexual organs. What's the difference between a gonad and a gamete? Gonad is an organ, while gametes are cells that are present inside the gonads. Okay? Make sure you understand the difference between a gonad and a gamete. The gonad is called uh, ovaries in female and testes in male. Okay? This is about meiosis, and we are going to cover meiosis in detail in lecture 4.2. Now that you understand the difference between mitosis and meiosis, let's have a look at the uh, cell cycle in mitosis. All right, so we talked about the interphase and we said the cell spends most of its time preparing for cell division. Now, this interphase accounts for around 90% of the cell cycle of cell cycle, while the mitotic phase is around 10%. You can see that it takes much shorter time to actually divide than prepare for, divi for division, which takes a very long time. Now let's have a look at what happens during the interphase. During the interphase, we start, we start here. This is the starting point and we start with G1. G1 means the first growth gap, okay, or the first gap. Now, what happens in G1? As the name indicates, what happens here is growth. So, the cell is growing its organelles, it's growing its cytoplasm, it's producing more macromolecules, it's trying to grow and prepare for a division because it's going to end up having or producing two cells, right? So everything needs to be double. That's number one. And then after that, we have the S phase. The S phase refers to synthesis synthesis and synthesis is for DNA so this is DNA synthesis this is the phase when the chromosomes are duplicated or copied notice here in G1 you have only one chromosome right one chromosome but then in the S phase which is the synthesis where chromosomes are duplicated you have uh, two Okay, so it has duplicated. This, that's the meaning of synthesis. So it has duplicated. This is all about the DNA. So in the S phase, we are just focusing on the DNA. We're not focusing on anything else, just the DNA. Okay, remember that we have thousands, hundreds of thousands of genes and each gene has to be duplicated. Each chromosome needs to be duplicated. So that's a big job for the cell and it takes time as well to do that without any mistake in order to make sure that it's accurate 100 percent after that we have the g2 phase and that's the second growth gap again this is this is about growth right so here the cell completes preparations for cell division and it's growing all the other things Okay, that are required for division. Once G1 is done, we move to the S. Once S is done, we move to the G2. And now we are here ready for the mitotic phase where mitosis will take place, division of the nucleus, followed by cytokinesis, which is division of the cytoplasm. And then we are going to end up with two daughter cells two daughter cells all right 
So the mitotic phase or the M phase is the shortest uh, period of the cycle. We have mentioned that it takes around 10% of the time required for cell division. Uh, mitotic phase uh, involves mitosis and cytokinesis, which is division of the nucleus followed by division of the cytoplasm. Okay, now mitosis is division of the nucleus. Uh, in this phase, we are producing two identical cells. This is a keyword, identical cells. And in mitosis, we have several subphases, okay? We have five subphases here. And we are going to discuss the subphases in the next lecture, inshallah. While cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. So we always start with the nucleus first. This is mitosis. And then we move to cytokinesis, which is division of the cytoplasm. Okay, so the question says, how does the cell prepare for mitosis? How does the cell prepare for mitosis? Let's have a look at what happens in the late interphase. Late interphase is actually the end of G2. Remember, we start with G1, which is the first gap. Then we move to the S phase, which is synthesis. Then we move to the G2, which is the second gap. Now this is at the very end of G2. Let's have a look at what has happened in um, the preparatory phase or the interface. Okay, nucleus is well defined. We are looking at this figure down here. You can see the nucleus is well defined, the Anywavhal nucleus. Okay, you can see it very clearly. Uh, the chromosomes are duplicated. خلاص صاروا double. Okay, now um, they have copied completely, of course, because this happens during the S phase, and now we are in the late interphase, which is uh, like at the very end of G2, okay? However, the chromosomes are not individually distinguished yet. Yani we cannot see them clearly when we look at it under the microscope. We just see it as threads, okay? You can see tiny, tiny threads over here. The centrosomes are duplicated, okay? This is the centrosome. You can see we have one and we have another one. So the centrosomes are duplicated, okay? Now, these centrosomes, they are made up of two centrioles. Remember, this is an animal cell. This is one centriole and this is the other centriole. And the other one, this is a centrosome. Each is made up of a pair of centrioles. Okay, and finally, microtubules extend from the centrosomes in radial arrays, which we call asters. See this guys here? I'm sorry, I made it very messy. Let me just delete, erase. Okay, now let's look at the asters over here. You can see that we have microtubules. Remember microtubules? Microfilaments and intermediate filaments. Please go back to the microtubules lecture in order to link it to this one because we have taken this before. Now, these radial arrays are known as asters. Asters means star, okay? Because it looks just like a star. Okay, now since we know what has happened in interphase, we are ready to go to the subphases of mitosis. Okay, and this we are going to study it in the next lecture, inshallah, after two days in lecture 4.1b or 4.1 part 2. Okay, so this was part 1. And in the next lecture, we are going to finish up with mitosis and study all the different subphases and the details in them, what happens, how does division takes place, and all these details, inshallah. 
Thank you very much for your attention. This takes me to the end of this lecture. I hope you enjoyed. I know there are a lot of new terminologies, so I advise you to actually study this uh, lecture very well so that in the next lecture, you're uh, ready to understand all the other new terms that you'll, enco you'll encounter. Again, I thank you again, and I wish you a lovely day.